Uh, here's uh, some remarks. If you're just getting up and you're just seeing us for the first time, here's a little from what the prime minister opened up saying. Mr. Secretary, my good friend, Tony, thank you for your important visit here today. Thank you. Thank President Biden. And thank you to the American people for your incredible support for Israel in our war against the barbarians of Hamas. So, Congressman, you're the you're the military guy uh, who also has that 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 political side to you. I think the goal is now to keep this a one front war. So go to the region, keep the Palestinian Authority out of it in the West Bank. Threaten Hezbollah if you get in the best you can and then go to our allies in the area and see what kind of leverage they have. What would you be doing? Well, that's exactly what I'd be doing. But we have to understand that Hamas, the enemy, has a vote. So if this is going to become a multi front war, it's going to be Hamas's fault and they need to be crushed. Uh, This is unacceptable. And I just want to say something, Brian. Um, We're speaking to the Israeli people. We know that I hope that they understand that we unequivocally support them. But I want to speak to my Republican and Democrat colleagues here in Washington, D.C. Um, this is not a time to uh, attack the Biden administration. You know how adamantly I, I disagree with what they're doing. But as Republicans and Democrats, as legislators here in the United States of America, now is not the time to attack the Biden administration. Now is the time to stand with the United States of America. That means the executive branch and the military to make sure that Uh, Israel understands that they have our unwavering support. So I'm calling on my Republican colleagues, our Democrat colleagues, let's get together, let's get the speakership done so that we can actually support Israel as they deserve it. Yeah, speakership uh, done, that's a whole other topic, uh, especially after what happened yesterday. But Congressman, uh, I think that if you just look at Hamas and there's not a recalibration of how they're treating Iran, it's going to be hard to not say anything at this moment. If we're going to continue to pretend that Iran isn't thoroughly behind it, financing 93 percent of their budget, who is orchestrating and pulling the strings here, that's a little too naive for me. It is. Brian, listen, this is a state-sponsored attack from Iran to Israel. Let's not mince words with that. And yes, the Biden administration has financed these guys for a long period of time to the tune of hundreds of millions, now billions of dollars. Uh, My point is this. This conflict needs to be stopped now, meaning is Israel needs to be able to crush Hamas, Islamic Jihad, all these folks that have been uh, hanging the sword of Damocles over uh, Israel's neck for an extended period of time. So, yes, Iran is at fault for this and they need to be dealt with directly. The Biden administration needs to speak to Iran and tell them the show is over. The game is done. Um, that they, we will not tolerate them uh, sponsoring these terrorist groups that are killing Jews at a level that we've not seen since the Holocaust. I don't think people maybe don't understand what's taking place there. It, it, is, it is indescribable right. how horrific what's going on. So, yeah, is, uh, Iran is at fault. The Biden administration needs to tighten up their game and make sure that we don't give them a single right. nickel more. This uh, split screen is so emblematic of your career. Because you're sitting there with a suit with your new job, but your old job is is uh, war, and behind you is a series of explosions uh, inside uh, inside Gaza. Now, in there are people who are living their lives, and the, what you're trying to say is, in two or three weeks, you're going to be hear personal stories of tragedy, the people that are not members of Hamas. But what you're also, I think, trying to say is, there's no other way to do it. To eradicate Hamas, who continues to live among the masses and live a subterranean life, you're going to have to get in there, and there's going to be casualties, and there's going to be collateral damage. That is correct, Brian. I did counterterrorism and hostage rescue operations for over two decades. And everything that's taking place in the Gaza Strip um, is the responsibility of Hamas. Let's let's be very clear. What's taking place in the, the Gaza Strip is the is directly is a direct result of Hamas's uh, horrific crimes. That's that's what's taking place now. So I would encourage the Palestinian people to make sure that they understand that Hamas is their enemy, and they are the enemy of freedom. They're the enemy of peace. They're the enemy of the United mm-hmm. States, and they're the enemy of the Jewish people. Lastly, we have about 22 Americans who could be in Gaza. Uh, what should America's role be? If it's an American that's being held, is it an American problem? Brian, one of my campaign promises is that I will never apologize for for protecting American citizens. The United States of America needs to leverage all the full spectrum of our combat power 
and intelligence networks to rescue American citizens. That's what the Department of Defense should be focused on right now, resupplying Israel, making sure they have stuff for Iron Dome. But we must get our American citizens out of the hands of these savages. And if that means killing everybody that has been uh, taking our American citizens hostage, well, then so be it. They brought this upon themselves. But Americans, every, every entity around the world needs to understand, if you get near an American citizen, we will find you. It doesn't matter how long it's going to take. We will find you. We will root you out, and we'll uh, remove you from the battle space. All right. Uh, Congressman, thank you. And use some of that leadership skills, if you can, to get your caucus in order so we can get a speaker. Thank you very much. Working on it. All right. Uh, 